We're talking Epcot this week. Flower and Garden Festival. Does Guardians of the Galaxy have new music? Plus Garden Rocks and more on episode 133 of the Mickey Fall Podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Mickey File Podcast. I am Scott, and with me, as always, is my lovely wife, Karen. Hello, everybody. It is almost St. Patrick's Day, so that's cool. I know. Raglan Road's got some stuff going on this weekend. I know. If I didn't have to work so early on Saturday, I'd consider going. And Sunday and Monday and... Uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday are late. (laughs) But, uh... Yeah, so that should be exciting. Yep, it is. So we had a cool uh, live last night. Mm-hmm. So congratulations to Selena. Yes, congratulations, Selena. Our big winner. She was a big winner considering she came in. You know, it's funny when you look at it. Like. The locals did really well with Disney Springs restaurants. <laughs> they did. <laughs> I don't know what that says about us Floridians, but yeah. they did really well with us. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. That's all I really got. Okay. So I guess we can uh, jump right into news this week. All right. Disney Visa Card members can save up to 35% on Walt Disney World Resort stay for summer 2023. So is that like everywhere? Yeah, it's just different percentages. All right, I just saw a picture of it on Facebook and I didn't really look at it. Yeah, so it's different, obviously different percentages based on resorts. Yeah, like they always do. Yeah, like they always do. So it's for stays from May 14th to June 24th, Mm -hmm. July 5th through August 19th. Yep. And then the 27th of August to September 7th. Yeah. So I think that must include Labor Day weekend. But what's up with August 20th through the 26th? Is that like the last week before school or something? I don't know. Yeah, it's some weird gaps, but anyway. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I think it's very cool. So if you have a Disney Visa card, advantage of it. Yeah. I mean, 35. Hopefully you already got it because those tend to sell out pretty quickly. Yes, they do. Um, Tron Light Cycle Run merchandise collections was announced. So it's basically three different three different merchandise collections and then an experience. So they have Life on the Grid, which is inspired by the design language of the digital world. Thrill of the Race, which is race-inspired apparel. And then Back to the Arcade captures the early 80s arcade scene. Then the last one is Tron Identity Program Experience. It's an all-new retail experience which offers guests a customizable, quote, program action figure and identity chip that can be used to reprogram other merchandise such as an interactive identity discs, remote control light cycles. They're actually showing it. It's pretty cool. They make the face look like you, the whole deal. Um, So it's like Droid Depot, but a little more. Yeah, it's actually more like the Avatar experience that came out afterwards that we haven't seen. Oh, yeah. So they can make you look like an Avatar, so now they can make you look like a Tron Identity program. Okay. Okay. Um, The reservations for the interactive experience can be made beginning March 21st. Obviously not until Tron opens, which is April 4th. Right. So, and I found out the price on it too. It's like $89. Yeah, I feel like uh, Avatar wasn't as expensive as Star Wars either. Right. So, I think it's kind of neat. I was watching a little video about it and... Pretty neat. Like you pick up the disc, 
Um, and it actually goes to your color and it talks to you and things like that. Okay, well, it does sound pretty cool. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah. There's been a lot of Tron talk, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost as big a deal as Encanto. <laughs> almost. Um, Moana will greet guests on Discovery Island at Disney's Animal Kingdom starting on April 22nd, which is Earth Day. Okay, so that's neat. She's going to start, you know, another character meet and greet. That's good. Yeah. On Discovery. Okay. So right up front. Right up front. Yeah. Okay. All right. And Figment is going to be greeting guests at the Imagination Pavilion at Epcot later this summer. They didn't give the exact date. When's Flower and Garden end? Flower and Garden ends July 5th. Interesting. So basically, it'll be in time for like food and wine? <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they don't show any signs of, like, stopping promoting him. No. He's on everything. But yeah, that doesn't seem like the hardest meet and greet to get together to do it while you have a festival that's all about figment. Right. Um. And Maribel is going to be greeting guests as well in the fairy tale garden at Magic Kingdom this fall. Is that where Brave is? Where Ye- Mer- Merida is? Yes, that is where Merida is. And I'm that disappoints me. Yes, because I don't feel like Encanto fits in Fantasyland. I agree. I don't know where it fits in Magic Kingdom. But I don't feel like it's the vibe of fantasy land. They could put her in in Town Square Theater in one of those there. Tinkerbell is in one of them. They could. I am kind of surprised with as big a deal as Mirabelle is yes. that they're not going to contain the crowd a little better than over there. Right. Anyway, that's cool. Yeah. I feel like at least Maribel probably should be, well, this fall. Okay, I guess it's fine. I was yeah. going to say, she'd probably be in Epcot for yeah. some reasons. Uh, one is that she's the first thing you see when you come in the gate mm-hmm. now. But yep. that is, we are talking about like seven, eight months from now. Right. Epcot is actually going to be the center location for Disney 100 celebrations. Um, They're going to be beginning this fall with a new nighttime show. They gave little, like a artist rendition of what it's going to look like. So we have six months of Epcot forever? Apparently. Are they not starting the 100th at Disney World until this fall? Because it seems like you're missing like six months of celebration. I mean, I know they have some merchandise. Right. And I know we've still got two weeks, give or take, of... 50th. The 50th. Right. But it sure doesn't seem like they're really doing anything here yet anyway. Right. Right. I have seen some little, some things that they're coming out with, like Mickey and Minnie in their platinum outfits, and there's a big decorative 100 platinum thing that they're creating. So, but nothing's been solidified yet that I've seen. Yeah. On March 12th, so Sunday night, at the age of 93, Disney legend and Imagineer Raleigh Crump passed away. So, 
he was about the last of the old guard that's still with us. Mm-hmm. And he was a very strong imagineer and legend. He left quite a legacy behind him. Yeah, he uh, he was a big part of that imagineer series or show or whatever it was they did mm-hmm. a couple years ago. Yeah, that was a really good series on that. I like that. Yeah. Maybe we'll watch it again. Yeah. The Art of Disney has moved to Town Square Theater at the Magic Kingdom. Okay, so I think it should be on Main Street. Yes. Um, I can't even tell you what they've done with whatever the name of the place was back there by Gaston's Tavern where it has been for the last couple of years. Yeah, the... Um, it's a hodgepodge of merchandise that doesn't seem to deserve its own store. But right. Yes, it has one. So basically right when you walk into Tony's Town Square... That whole front entrance is all now Art of Disney. You know, Art of Disney is like always my favorite show, store to go into wherever. Uh-huh. But the one at Epcot is a shell of its former self. Yes. And hidden away. And now the Magic Kingdom one is going to be a shell of its formal, former self and kind of hidden away. Yeah. So I'll have to keep going to Disney Springs, I guess. I guess so. Like, I don't even know if they have an art of Disney at Hollywood or uh, Animal Kingdom. I don't think they do. I don't know where they'd be. I don't know. I mean, the you know, the stuff in there is super cool. It's amazing. Very right. collectible. Yes, which but. we have quite a bit of it. <laughs> yeah, I know. But anyway... It's okay. But at least now it's got a... I mean, that's a good home is Town Square, though. Town Square Yeah, Theater. I'm not sure it is. There's a lot going on right there. Because you have Tony's. With the VIP tours and Tony's and the yeah. Tinkerbell. And, uh, yeah, there's just a lot going on there. Yeah. Um, so it feels like it's been tucked in a corner, too. Now, maybe, I don't know. I don't see the vault going away. That stuff's selling like hotcakes. Yeah. But. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Disney Cruise Line will begin visiting Lighthouse Point, a new private Disney destination on the island of, I don't know, Eleuthera in the Bahamas in the summer of 2024. So I didn't know it was like on an island in the Bahamas. I thought they bought the island. But I guess not. Like, I thought it was the new Castaway Key. Yeah, well, it's just going to be a secondary. Island. Right, right. But apparently it's on an island. Yeah. So it's only part of the island, I guess. Yeah. Okay, well, that's cool. I mean, yeah. it's still another year plus. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know people are excited about it. It was big news when they bought it. Yeah. I think it'll be very cool. It looks... the you know, illustrations that they're showing look pretty cool. What would it cost to buy part of an island in the Bahamas? It, it's probably not cheap. <laughs> no, and so, like, I'd really like to know how much they make on that. Like, what do you make on Castaway Key or now this? Because it can't be cheap. Right. And they have a lot of divisions that are losing a lot of money. I just wonder. I mean, story. at the time they bought it, they weren't losing billions of dollars. But. Right. Well, guess we'll wait and see. Yeah. See how it turns out. And I mean, cruise lines seem to be doing pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I guess they are. I guess. Since they've come back, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, what's the last one? Um, CEO Bob Iger talks Disney Park's guest experience and rethinking pricing strategy and opportunities to add more attractions at a Morgan 
Stanley big conference thing. Yeah. He was pretty, right. you know, he was pretty much kind of laying it out, kind of going, you know, maybe we need to evaluate some things more. You know, he keeps bringing up how they raise, how they keep raising prices. Mm-hmm. That's not something that just Chapik did. No. Like, I mean, maybe it got a little more frequent. I don't even know that it did. It got more public, for right. sure. Right. I mean, is it the first time that Disney's done seasonal pricing or... Right. You know, I don't know. Anyway, no. I don't know. Just an observation. Yeah. Um, there is a little bit of DVC news. Direct sales slumped again in February. Um, theoretically, according to DVCnews.com, could be high prices. Uh, probably more likely the impending sale of points for villas at Disneyland Hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that every time you go to the Magic Kingdom, you see the progress on the Polynesian yeah. Tower. Mm-hmm. And a competitive resale marketplace. So, resale's gotten crazy. Yeah, it has. Like, there's some resorts they're giving away. Yes. And then I just looked at <laughs> Grand Cal is two fifty resale. Yeah, and that was a low end. Like, yeah. So I don't know. It's all weird. But yeah. people are still buying because I get notified all the time. Yep. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I think DVC will be fine. I think so too. You know, and if they aren't, they'll stop building. But so far they've, in the last, what, four years, three and a half, mm-hmm. they've opened Riviera, converted Grand Floridian, and started building at Polynesian. Right. Plus Disneyland. Yeah, Villas of the Grim. Yeah, Villas. so they don't yeah. really see it slowing down, I don't think. Yeah. So that's cool. Very cool. So that's it for the news. Yeah, kind of a light news week. Yeah, we actually did some food and wine booths this weekend. We did. We met up at Epcot with our friend Amanda and Jen and Travis. Yep. Travis is there like almost as much as we are. <laughs> almost as much as Amanda Bond. <laughs> but all three of them had Tron previews. Yes, they did. So um, I think the opinion was that Guardians is still better, but it's a very fun ride. Yes, but like we said, they opened them in the wrong order. They did, yeah. Yeah, straight up. Yeah. Um, we barely really got into World... Well, I mean, I guess we did. In the afternoon, the last couple hours, we spent time in World Showcase. We spent the whole morning in whatever, future world. Yeah. World something. So by the time we all got there and met Amanda, um, our guardians virtual queue had been called. So that was like the first thing we did. Yes. Actually, I think we got breakfast and then that was the first thing we did. Yes. So the first stop we made was actually at the Farmer's Feast. Mm-hmm. Um, Amanda and then later Jen and Travis all had the char-grilled bison ribeye. Mm-hmm. And everybody had Good things that you had some of it. Right? I had some of it, yes. And it was delicious, very tender. Yeah, cool. I mean, super tender and a really just good flavor. Uh, you and Amanda got the hibiscus lemonade cocktail, which was really good. It was delicious. It was that right <laughs> yes. amount of sour, mm-hmm. you know, with the lemonade. Yep. I had the weirdest drink I've ever had. <laughs> what was that? The Ghost Mary. So... The name grabbed me because I was like, this is going to have a ghost pepper in it. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. It's not why it's a ghost, Mary. (laughs) 
instead of using tomato juice, mm -hmm. it was tomato water, which I have not even Googled to find out what it is because I'm not sure I want to know. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Is it like, I don't know. I guess I should look at it. I know. See what it is. So it was a Bloody Mary and it tasted like a Bloody Mary. But very, very faint though. It didn't uh, have that strong Bloody Mary taste. Well, it didn't have the strongest tomato flavor. Right. Uh, okay, yeah. So let's see. Gfreefoodie.com says... Okay, they say, so tomato water. Put four large tomatoes or five to seven medium in a blender or food processor. You don't have to core them or anything. Just make sure they're clean. Guy adds one cucumber, whatever. Have some salt. Process until you're somewhere between finely chopped and pulp. Position the strainer over the bowl. Line the strainer with cheesecloth or a towel and pour the tomato mixture in the strainer. Okay. So somehow it just gets all the liquid without any of the red. Oh. And it's super thin. Like there's no pulp in it. So it's, yeah, it's like, I don't know, it looks like yeah. lemonade. Yeah, it does. So it was really weird um, to look at it, but it tasted good. Yeah. Actually, it was really kind of light and refreshing, like on a hot day, if you don't really want the weight of a Bloody Mary. Yeah, that would be a nice option. So um, I still think the bourbon Bloody Mary was better, but mm -hmm. but this one was good. Yeah, it was good. Had a cool glass. Yeah. It says, what is tomato water exactly? It's the flavorful, fragrant liquid that releases from ripe tomatoes when they're cut. So the stuff that ends up all over your cutting board when you're slicing tomatoes. <laughs> That's a really good description. <laughs> yeah. So you put it in a blender and then you just strain out all the stuff that's actually tomato. Pretty cool. Um, okay. Um. Yeah, so anyway, it was actually, it was really good. Like, I'll order it again. Yeah. And maybe throw a ghost pepper in it. <laughs> I mean, like, even Amanda, too, was, like, kind of disappointed it didn't have the pepper. Yeah. But but it was very good. Yes. So, Farmer's Feast was a win. Mm -hmm. And the hibiscus flower that was in it tasted like a fruit roll-up. That was the weirdest yeah, part. Yeah, they They're... They're but, good. Yeah. So they were both nice and light, like summer mm -hmm. day drinks. Yes, Which they was were. good because it was hot. It was hot. On Saturday. Uh-huh. So then we went and rode Guardians. So something weird happened at Guardians. Very weird. Now, I don't know. Somebody in the audience here may call us and or email us or whatever. And tell us where. And tell us that this has been going on for a year. But we had never seen it before. And the people around us in line had never seen it before. And we've been out a lot. Yeah. So we just had gotten you know, maybe halfway. Through the queue. Through the queue. At least halfway up to like the room with the weird lights. Yeah. Um, and on the big circle screen up in the ceiling, mm -hmm. Peter Quill was on there. Yep. And all of a sudden, like, all the lights in the place turned purple. Yeah. Which they change colors all the time. Right, but everything turned purple. But everything turned purple, and all of a sudden, you heard, ooga chaka. Ooga, ooga, ooga chaka. So, yeah. like, I I mean, we've all been complaining that Hooked on a Feeling is not in Guardians. But it was like a big old Hooked on a Feeling dance party for... I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. Yeah, because it even Maybe showed... Maybe longer than that. It even showed Peter Quill dancing up there to it. Yeah, so it was weird. Yeah. And they should do more of that. I think Amanda had a great idea. That whole bottom part of the queue should just be a dance party while you're in line. Oh, that would be fantastic. You know? I mean, you know, the story part of it's cool, but just play music and yeah. let us party. Yeah. So that was kind of interesting. I don't know. 
We were very it didn't excited happen the second time we went through, but the second time we were in a lightning lane and it was super fast. Yeah, and we, but we were trying to hang back and then I Yeah, but then that lady came up behind us and yeah. so that wasn't gonna happen. Right. Uh, so we got off there. I think we went to brunch cot. Yes, we did. You had avocado toast, which was which delicious. is like a standby there. It is. It's it's complete stable. It's so good. Um, Amanda had the Lox Benedict on an everything focaccia bagel. Yes, and she said the one thing she said is that it was very hard. The bagel, thin bagel. Toast was um, very hard. Yeah. That seems hard to keep very yeah. fresh out there. Yeah. And the um, over easy egg or poached egg, whatever was on there, was barely done. <laughs> but it was done. Yeah. And I don't know if it was a poached egg or what do they call it? A perfect egg? I don't know. I didn't read the description. Um, I, I mean, it was, it was pretty soft. Yeah. I had just the Joffrey's coffee cold brew cocktail or whatever it was called. So, and then I asked you, was it better than the one at Steakhouse 71? Uh, yeah, I think so. But the one at Steakhouse 71 had bourbon in it. Oh, this one doesn't have any, this one didn't. Have any in it? No, I think this one had like two kinds of rum. Oh, okay. That's why I'm trying to find it and I can't find it. I know, it. I was trying to find it too. Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, okay, Joffrey's Coffee Cold Brew Cocktail with Milk, Kahlua Rum, Coffee Liqueur, and Vanilla Vodka. Oh, so it had everything in it. Yeah. It was good. Um, you know, I like my bourbon, but it was it was good. Yeah. I got through it pretty quick. Oh, yeah, you did. And the avocado toast had a nice thick layer of avocado. And the tomatoes this year, they had them cut, so they actually stuck into the avocado. They didn't come rolling off. <laughs> God. Well, we ran into that last year. Yes, you did. Yeah. So I'm glad that they did it and kind of stuck them in there. Yeah. So. But it was very good, very tasty. Yeah, it looked, um, was it actually avocado or was it like guacamole? No, it was actually um I didn't actually really pay avocado. attention to it. It looked, like a, it, it looked like a spread when I just glanced at it. But... Oh, it was basically just mushed up avocado. And just okay. Little, yeah, it was just straight. Yeah, not really guacamole. But... No, it was actual avocado. It was very good. Right, okay, cool. Nice flavor. Oh, and I think I just had so, water, yeah. Um, I would say brunch cot is probably not as good as like the donut shop. Right. And they still had like a Fruit Loop milkshake or. I know. I don't understand that. You know, we're still on that throw some cereal on a milkshake and call it special. Kick. Yeah, I know. I just, yeah. But. But that's okay. Yeah. It was good. I just don't think it was as good. Yeah. Uh, later, let's see. Then we went to the... We went to the Honey Bistro. Yes, which is always a winner. Yeah, we all went to that. Yes, that's always a big winner. So, our group had the Pollinator Flatbread. How was that? I didn't have it. It was delicious. And actually, it was, it was, it was so good, I forgot to give Amanda some. (laughs) (laughs) Whoops. I told her, I go, I'm sorry. She goes, it's okay. (laughs) I got the uh, honey cheesecake. That was good. Yeah, you like that? Did it just taste like honey or? It just tasted like cheesecake. Okay. Like it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't anything special. It was just cheesecake and I love cheesecake. Yeah. So it was great. But I mean, it wasn't any like, oh my God, this is the best cheesecake I've ever had. It was just cheesecake. Okay. Um, and then Amanda and Travis both had the chicken and waffles. Which must have been good because I didn't hear anything about it. Yeah. the She said that the weird part was it was that because it was a cornbread waffle, not a regular waffle. Oh, okay. Yeah, they like their cornbread at that booth. Yeah. 
Um, I know the one that I saw that I paid attention to. Mm -hmm. The chicken was way bigger than the waffle, which was kind of cool. Yeah, the picture they have of it is very deceptive. It is much bigger in person yeah, than the it picture is. It's one of the few things I've ever seen Disney do that with. It, yeah. it, it looks tiny in the photographs, but it was actually a decent size. Yeah. Like, it would it would feed a person. I mean, I don't, I'm not positive it was big enough to share, like, you know, right. unless you were going to every booth and... Yeah. You know, or many, many booths like we did and mm -hmm. getting stuff. Um, but it was it was big. Yeah. And then there I got the um vodka honey peach cobbler freeze. Right. Which was like a milkshake. Um which is not what I thought it was gonna be. So it was like they've all right, so first of all, they forgot about us. Yeah, completely. They left us standing there for like ten minutes waiting on food. Yeah. Um, when we finally got the peach cobbler thing, um, all the vodka was on top. And so I, I don't, maybe this is how they're making it, but what I feel like is they were like, oh God, we better get this one done. And they just poured vodka on somebody's milkshake and handed it to me. Yeah. So, um, once I'd had enough to get it stirred up, it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't great. Yeah. Um, I had the honey, the Florida Orange Groves Winery Orange Blossom Honey Wine. It was good. It's one of those I couldn't have a big glass of it. That sounds super sweet. Yeah. It was pretty sweet. But it wasn't, it was sweet, but it wasn't like overly sweet. It was just one of those, it was more of a sipping wine rather than you have a glass of wine and then you have another glass of wine. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know what the flatbread costs this time. Traditionally, Ooh. it has been one of the best values I at the festival. I believe I have the receipts here. Because it's really big. Um, the flatbread was six twenty five. Yeah, so it hasn't even gone up. So no. it's it's really big for it, six bucks. It really is. Like it's as big as the paper plate. Yes. So it completely filled the paper plate. Yeah. And it's and their flatbreads were always good. Yes. It was delicious. There was, it was a little crunchy on one side, but part of it is it had been sitting there a while by the time they gave it to me. Yeah. So, but that's a whole other, that, that's a, just a different deal. Yeah. So. Um, we did the land and we did Soren, mm -hmm. all of us. So that yep. was cool. Yes. The cast member really tried to give us our own boat. Yeah. It really didn't end tried. up happening because people came up right at the last minute. And, but she like, really she even was. let the people behind us go on. Another the boat. boat in front of us. Yeah, I know. Just because she wanted us to have our own boat. She was trying super hard. <laughs> so we appreciate it. Yes. So I'm sure the people behind us didn't like the fact that we were talking the whole time, but whatever. <laughs> they they were fine. <laughs> we weren't loud. No, we weren't. Um Soren, we got B1. Yes. We were the we were the people. All right. So we got up to the thing and she's like, How many are there? And we're like, Five. She goes, Can you sit two and three? I was like, if we can sit in B. And she's like, Okay, if you wait for the next one, I'll get you in B one. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, not a problem. We're like, yeah, we're willing to wait. We're willing to wait. Uh so that was posted 45 minutes. We waited an extra ride and we were off in 45 minutes. Right. So that and was it, and it didn't really even feel like 45 minutes. I mean, even with it, so... Yeah, no, it didn't. Well, but, just, but, I mean, there were five of us. So yeah, they were talking. Different. Yeah, But we walked, I mean, we didn't... We walked through most of that queue before we got into the crowd and had to stop walking. Yeah. So that's one of those don't believe the... Don't believe the wait times. Wait time, always. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's going to be right, but yeah. don't always. Right. Uh, left there, and everybody wouldn't go to France. Yes. For the croissant du fr au fromage. Mm -hmm. And your favorite part was the what? Uh, I had the Cronenberg beer. Do you like it? Um, yeah, I've, I've had it. They had a booth set up with it at one of the festival of the holidays, maybe a couple years ago. Um, 
not in France, but near France. Mm, okay. I want to say like where the Encanto kitchen is. Yeah, probably. Somewhere right in there. Um, but it's very good. It's very tasty beer. Yeah. So. Um, and then, yeah. I mean, it's not, I'm not going to go looking for it, but if I'm in France and want to drink, that's what I'll get. Yeah. Um, and I had the, um, you know, cheese croissant. Yeah. And you had, all of you guys had the La Vie en Rosé, I guess, mm-hmm. frozen slushy. It was delicious. Yeah. It was pretty too. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was cool. Yeah. That lemonade from Farmer's Feast was cool because it was like purple and pink. Mm-hmm. Like it was yes. super cool looking. Yes. And then Jen, oh, I'm sorry, um, Amanda got the um, the beef. Um, yeah. And that was really good. I had a bite of that and that was really good. Mm-hmm. And um, the- and chocolate then, tart. right, Jen got the chocolate tort, and then we made a concoction of the chocolate. Combined it with the croissant. Yes, and, and it was delicious. And it was a winner. But the that tort was outstanding. Yeah. yeah it disappeared fast. Yes. Well, we were all jumping in on it. So. <laughs> Where was I when you guys went to Tangerine Cafe in China? Uh, you were sitting at America. Oh, yeah, watching. Yes. Yeah. So we got over to America. Mm-hmm. And Tommy DiCarlo was singing. Yes. So he was, was, is, was, I don't think they're still together. Uh, the lead singer for Boston after Brad Delp passed away. Ah. Um, super, mm-hmm. sounded super good. Like his voice is still strong. Right for for the key that those songs are written in. Mm-hmm. Um, close your eyes and knowing that you know Brad delp has been dead for a long time. And oh, right, I went to a Boston concert in 1987, so you know it's old. Um, you couldn't it, it, close your eyes; you wouldn't have really known it wasn't actually Boston. Right. So it was. It was good. It was really good. Really good show. Yeah. Um, And he did some stuff that, a a few surprising choices of Mm -hmm. really good songs that nobody's heard because they don't get played on the radio. Right. So it was, it was fun. Yeah. Um, We were listening to that on the way to Tuta Gusto, weren't we? uh, Yeah, we would have still been. Mm Mm-hmm. So we did go to Tuta Gusto. Yes. Got to go into the, just at the... Quote, quote, to go bar. <laughs> yeah, grab and go is what they said. Right. Now, because there were five of us and a couple other people, like, we ordered a drink, and by the time I was the first one to order, so by the time I got mine and then everybody else got theirs, I was ready to order again. So we did hang out a little bit. Yeah, we had a really good um, bartender. Though. We had two really good bartenders, yeah. both of them. So yeah, I asked them what their best bourbon drink was because you know most of these places have like a specialty cocktail with you know here's our vodka cocktail or cocktails and here's our gin one and you know so what's your bourbon one well they don't have one right but the bartender was like oh get the paper plane it's an international cocktail he said um it's delicious i'd never heard of it and never had one before it was delicious Mm mm-hmm I, I had it. Super light and refreshing. Mm-hmm. I had some of it. It was, was very good. That was, you know, it was hot Saturday, if we haven't already said that. Which yes. we have. It was very warm. And uh, so the word was, you know, light and refreshing yes. all day long. <laughs> That's what we were looking for. Right. And it was, uh, it, it fit the bill. It really did. You had an espresso martini. It was amazing. It was amazing. Amazing. Yeah, it's good to know. It was probably one of the largest martinis I've ever seen. Because it was in a it was in a glass. I mean, it was a full glass. So here's my question about Tuto Gusto. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like the restaurants are at reduced capacity anymore. 
So how long are they going to be without that bar being open? I don't know. Because it was so nice to go in there. They have sofas and tables and you can order flights and... Yeah, I mean, like, I understand, I understood when, you know, they had 10 feet between every table and right. only seating every other table and all that. Yeah, but they're not doing but that anymore. They're, they're not, and I don't know what their plan with that bar is. I don't know. And it's a bar, a lounge, whatever. Right. Wine cellar, I guess, but right. it's not really. But um, it was good. First time we'd been back in there since COVID, so... Mm-hmm. It was exciting. It was. It was. The we girl. saw Harmonious. Yes, we did. All right. So you guys, while I was watching Tommy DiCarlo, you went to. <laughs> we went to uh, Tan- the Tangierin Cafe. Right. And Amanda got the Hummus Trio and we both got the Cider Flight. Okay. Um, which, of course, is always good. The hummus trio was really cool because it actually had three different hummuses. And, you know, Amanda said they were very, it was good. She said it was very good. And the cider flights, they always have great cider flights. Yeah, they do. Yes. Then when you continue, when you were still watching, um, we went to China because Amanda went to get the spicy mala chicken skewer with extra peanut sauce on it. Um, and I'm like, well, I'll get something else to eat. So I got the cheesy crab wontons, the homemade ones. So we split it. Okay. Um, I got the drink I got was called the Kung Fu Master. I feel like I've had that before. Yeah, it was that was good. Um, and then Amanda got the Tropical Moon. So I do want to say one thing about while I was sitting in America at a picnic table <laughs> with... Um, all of our backpacks, like all yes. three of our backpacks. Yes. On the bench, they're on the table. Right. Two different groups of people, well, actually one solo lady and a whole family came and sat at the table. <laughs> Didn't say, hey, can we come sit at the table? I've got three backpacks on the table. Everybody came up, sat at the table. So I don't know that this whole communal dining thing is like a thing, but apparently it is in the American Pavilion. Oh, because that's that's where it happened with Dave that's too. Where Dave, that's where they got Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Two different groups. I mean, they were all cool, and they were all well. Uh, the one chick was from Miami. The family was from Mount Dora, I think. Mm-hmm. Or oh yeah, somewhere right over there. Right. Um. But yeah, and I mean, it was cool. And if they'd ask, I would have said fine. Yeah, and they seemed when we got there, they just came up and sat down. Yeah, and then we come up with our stuff. We're like, um, who are these people? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's weird, but yeah. But I had a great seat for Tommy DeCarlo. I could almost see him. I know. So why I could hear all of it. Yeah, there you go. You could hear all of it. That's that's what mattered, right? Yeah. So then we went and saw Harmonious. Mm-hmm. Probably for the last time. Maybe not. We might see it one more time. Yes. Because we are there the last weekend of April or of March. Yes. Um, and of April. But TDC 2023. So, but we uh, we got to share the stairs in Japan, our little secret spot. Mm-hmm. That's getting not so secret. Right. Um, it was great. It's You're right. It's the best place to watch them it really is and we got to watch people that got to places got walked up and just took the rope down themselves oh yeah and were, made themselves at home on the platform there were like 15 people up on the balcony where the drums are mm-hmm. and the cast member like first of all some people tried to like walk through us to go up the stairs right and amanda was just like oh there's a rope here right like there's nowhere to go Right. So they went around to the other side, dropped the rope in the back, and then the cast member came and ran them all away. Yeah. Threw them all out. Yeah. So. Which was great. It kind of was. Mm-hmm. You know, the ropes aren't a suggestion. Right. But it was a great place to watch it. It so. really was, because you could really see everything. Yeah. And then we left 
Epcot, mm-hmm. and we went to the Dahlia Lounge. Yeah, because Amanda said she hadn't been there. Yeah, so they had no issue. We pulled up to the gates, said we want to go to the Dahlia Lounge. Guy was like, cool, have fun. Yep. Uh, went upstairs. So we got the ham and cheese sandwich again, the bocadillo. Yeah, it was much better this time, I think. Way better. It was a completely different sandwich than yeah. it was when we went up there with Jen yeah. for the last time. Um, I did not have the smoked paprika chips. How were they? They were outstanding. Cool. Um, and then I got another paper plane because I'm into it now. Mm-hmm. And then I think you just had like a vodka and soda or whatever. Yeah, and I can't remember what Amanda had. Uh, I can't either. <laughs> But that's how we ended our night. Yeah. And uh, then the next day, we basically said goodbye to Amanda and went home. Mm Mm-hmm. So, that was our trip. It was actually... It was fun. We did a lot of stuff. We did do a lot of stuff. More than we normally do. I know. It was cool. But I'm glad we got to do some festival booths. Yeah. I mean, I still want to do more of them, obviously. We have plenty of time. Right. But I'm glad we got to go do... The ones at the front. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we just, we couldn't get away from the front because there were so many good ones up there. Yeah. And you know, the weird part was none of the lines were long. Uh, they were not. Like, like the all one, day, none of the lines were long. The one in France is the one that shocked me, how short that was. Yeah, it was. For a Saturday at what, five or six o'clock? Um, yeah, so the time didn't change until that night, right? Right. Uh, but... I mean, it was getting dark, so yeah, it was five or six o'clock. Yeah, and it was, I mean, was, we waited maybe five, five minutes-ish. Um, at least five. I mean, but, probably more like ten, but. But usually the line's wrapped around for France, and it was not. Yeah, so it was a good, it was a good day. Yeah, it was. And uh, we stayed at that Ramada Inn on 192. Mm-hmm. So, in the tower, mm-hmm. and it's a really good room for $86 plus, I think it was $13 for the resort fee. Yeah, but. So, I'll stay there again, and yeah. I have. So, we've probably been there four times now. Yeah. So, it was a good good trip over. Mm-hmm. We had a good time. Yeah. So, um, that's all I got. That's all I got. Um. Okay. Well, Thanks again, everyone, for listening to the show. Uh, Instagram, we are mickeyfile underscore podcast. Um, you clearly know where to find the podcast on Apple, Spotify, <laughs> Stitcher, whatever. Um, best way to support the show is to subscribe or follow or like or whatever your podcatcher calls it. Mm-hmm. Um you know, tell somebody about us, share us on social media. And uh, if you're inclined, you could throw a five-star review our way on Apple or Spotify. We would appreciate it because rumor has it that that helps people find the show and that would be cool. Would be cool. So um, I think that's everything. If you want to reach out with us with a question, comment, suggestion, what have you, uh, Mickey File Podcast, all one word at gmail.com. Goodbye. Good night, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>